Good morning, and thank you so much for joining me for Dear Week's with Dr. Angela. I am your host, Dr. Angela Butchester. You know what I like to do on my show. I want to enlighten you. I want to inspire you. I want to empower you to become your best self. The scripture reminds us that the tongue is a small thing that makes grand speeches, but a tiny spark can set a great forest on fire. And today, we want you to be fired up about alignment. We are talking balance. We are talking making sure that things are the way that they are supposed to be and what you can do to make sure that you are aligned. The same way that we make sure that our cars are in proper alignment, we should also make sure that we are in alignment as well. So I am excited to talk to our author, Jennifer Cochran, today. So you know what I'm going to tell you to do? Go on. Get comfy. Get cozy. Get your coffee or get your tea because we are about to get started. Good morning, Jennifer. Thank you so much for being on Daily Spark with Dr. Angela this morning. Good morning. This is such a great opportunity. Thank you. I can't wait to talk to you about your book. But as is custom here, we always give our authors an opportunity to introduce themselves to perhaps a few people out there that are unfamiliar with you or unfamiliar with your work. So, Jennifer, my question to you is, what makes you, you? What has made you the person that you are today? I honestly have to say every single thing that's ever happened to me, it has been quite a journey. (laughs) (laughs) I can can understand. I can understand that. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I'm just, uh, I'm one of those people that, I I need to I need to learn constantly. I need to find out why things are happening and what does it mean to me and 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 that it just has continued to help me grow and understand things and um make sense of a world that sometimes doesn't make so much sense. Absolutely, absolutely. And I love the fact that you are um, a, a healer, you're a counselor, you know, that you really, you really have a heart for, for others, uh, working with trauma, personal growth, all of that, that, that really, that really says a lot about who you are. So I, I definitely understand that. Now, being an author, is that something that you always wanted to do, or did you find that that was just the next thing on your life path? It was definitely the next thing. I had never, uh, I'd never seen myself as an author. I never, I didn't sit around thinking, oh, yes, someday I'm going to write this, this book. And it really, the idea came to me through someone else. It sparked, you know, there's that word, it sparked something in me. Like I felt like I'd been uh, touched with like a magic wand or something. And I couldn't stop thinking about this concept. So I, went to a coach who helped me really embrace the idea of how to express that message that I had been thinking about. And it took me a little while to get on board with the idea of being an author. It it felt awkward at first. And then I realized, oh, oh, this is okay. I, I can be an author. <laughs> Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I love it. I love it. She says, yeah, I think I can do this. <laughs> I yeah. love that. I love that. Mm-hmm. Now, the, the title of your book, um, I like it. How did you come about the full title of your book? Huh. Well, there were, there were um, several people that I threw some of my ideas out to, and then we kind of voted on what would be the best one, but it, it absolutely had to be alignment. That that had to be it. At first, I wanted to call it the ABCs to alignment, but then another author uh, created a book right around the same time called the ABCs to success, and I thought, okay, well, I don't want to compete with that. So we moved we moved to this idea of, of internal chaos, and the front of the book Uh, my son designed, and it, it, I think it does such a nice job of showing internal chaos. (laughs) Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, did you learn the concept um, of alignment from a family member? Is it something that you learned while um, 
college university in a training? How did you find mm-hmm. out about alignment? I went to counseling. I was the client. And my life, I felt like my life was just a mess. Nothing was working the way I wanted it to. And I was already, I I was a a licensed counselor at the time. And I felt like such a hypocrite. Like, how can I talk to these people about getting their lives together if I can't get my own life together? So I went and got some therapy. And the therapist got up, went to her whiteboard and drew the stick figure and said that there was a, a researcher who had studied world leaders and what they have in common. And what they had in common was that their thoughts, their words, their feelings, and their actions lined up. And at that moment, I remember sitting there thinking, well, I don't really need to be a world leader, but boy, I sure need to be a leader in my own life. And that was the beginning. And I couldn't stop. I couldn't, I couldn't stop after that, thinking about it and creating ideas to go with it. I love that. But, yes, but you know, that is that is so true. Like you said, we may not be a world leader, but we are leaders in our own little world. You know, yeah. we need to be able to to put our best foot foot forward. So you are you are so right about that, and especially if you're in a leadership capacity, you want what's best not only for yourself but for your team members or organization or whomever it is that you're working with. I, I love that. Now, why do you think that people have such a, a tough time? When it comes to setting boundaries, I know that many times women especially, we don't like to say no. We don't like to be seen as not being kind or accommodating. But why do you think people in general have an issue with setting boundaries? I, uh, so in my, in my thinking and in my model, what comes before boundaries is accountability. So once we figure out what what is actually my responsibility? What, what am I accountable for and who am I accountable to? Then there are thoughts that go with that and emotions that come next. And then we move into boundary setting. But I, I believe in our culture, we are taught that we are responsible for how other people feel, which is actually not true <laughs> because we are not inside of them. Um, our feelings are very personal. They, there are perception of our own thoughts or um, the information that's coming to us. And, and because of that one piece, feeling like we are responsible or accountable for how somebody else feels, we don't want to express ourselves honestly or truthfully or, or sometimes, you know, assertively and boldly. Um, so our message is skewed. And then our boundaries are not appropriate and clear. It, it's just this whole big system that, that doesn't seem to work very well. I, I think I hear what you're saying. So let me ask you this then. Um, for, for those with, with the model that, that you're bringing forth, how does that work for people who believe uh, in interconnectedness, that we are all a part of the larger whole? So if, what I say or or how I express myself, I'm not responsible for, for how you feel. How do I express myself in a way that you can still hear me, that you still understand that I care about what you have to say, but I'm still expressing my truth? That's the third part of the model, which is communication. So communicating is, in in its best form, is two people sharing their thoughts, sharing their feelings, and the, and one person is sharing and one person is listening and giving feedback, and then they switch roles. We don't, we don't tend to communicate that way. <laughs> we, we, <laughs> which is why we get into so much trouble. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> Absolutely, because I know other people are laughing as well because they're going, I just said that the other day. It's about communication. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Please continue, Jennifer. You're you're on to something here. Well, okay. So so when when I – it took me – I mean, I didn't come up with this like, you know, oh, I got it figured out. Like, it took a really long time 
to to un, unpack all of this stuff and lay it out where I could see it more clearly. So I I understand that it is a it is a practice, right? So once I figure out what I'm, what am I accountable for, okay? And then I have feelings about that. Then I may need to set some boundaries about where my where my edges are, where my guidelines, my limits are, and and communication is how I do that. So there there are a few steps that go into finally being able to express myself. One, two, three. Understanding that that when we know what we're accountable for, and then we we get clear about that. We notice what we're thinking. We have some emotions that go with that. Then we're ready to express ourselves. Then we're ready to say what our position is. And until that moment, we're, we're not, the communication is just like a, I don't know, it's like a tennis game. You know, you're just throwing ideas back and forth at each other, but it's not really getting anywhere. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, I love that. I love that. You know, what tends to happen to people who don't take a vested interest in knowing themselves? You know, they kind of just whatever, whatever. They they just they can't explain themselves to others because they themselves don't know what's going on. How do you how do you work with someone like that? Hmm. I I notice it. I give feedback about that. Uh, counselors say things like, "Huh." It, it really seems like that's difficult for you. You know, can I show you this model? Can I, can I give you some ideas here? And then, and then I watch the light bulbs go off in their heads. It's really cool. <laughs> it's almost like a light show, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You are, you are so, you are so right. You know, I, I love, I love being a, a pastoral counselor because I love helping uh, people get to those epiphany moments and, and you're right, just seeing them go, oh, wait a minute. And you can see the moment that they, that they catch a hole and it's like, up, oh, they're going, there they go. Yep, yep, there's yep. momentum. You are, you are so right. And it's like, yes, at the end because they're like, oh, thank God I figured that out. And it's like, yeah, we have these other things to deal with, but you figured that out and that, that does keep them going and that momentum to want to deal with, with any other issues that they may have. You are, you're so right about that. Now, can alignment be, I'm sorry, the alignment model that you speak of, can that be taught to, um, to, to not just adults, but to our teens or even to our, our children, like in elementary or uh, middle school? Absolutely. And, and I've proven it by using my grandchildren because <laughs> I've got a bunch of them. So I, they're, they're like my little, uh, my little lab rats, right? So <laughs> when they, when something happens, I, I absolutely on purpose, very intentionally apply this model to see what they do with it. Little kids get this so well if it's presented in a very clear matter of fact way, you know, just like how do you put your shoes away? Or how do you brush your teeth? Or right. So uh, I have I have I have stories in my book, and one of the stories refers to one of my granddaughters when she was four, and it was it was just a beautiful moment to to watch it all you know play all the way through, and for her to take responsibility for what she needed to do after she had made a mistake, and and kids you know kids are learning they're like little sponges. So they're picking up all kinds of information all the time and how smart it is to give them information that they can use for the rest of their life, you know, when they're little. Absolutely. And you you are so right. Because they're sponges, we really do need to pour into them to give them um, those skills that they need to to be there, to be their best selves. Uh, Adults uh, tend to kind of resist a a little bit more. You know, they, well, this is the way I've always done. But it's not a behavior that that works for you. Why are you holding on so tightly to it? Because it's all right. I know, and it, it really is a little bit more difficult for adults. I, I, I love it. Thank you for for bringing that up. 
Well, Jennifer, it is time for us to go to break. But before we do, can you remind everyone, please, what is the title of your book? Where can we get a copy? And how do we stay in contact with you? The book is called Alignment, Move from Internal Chaos to Clarity. It can be purchased at Amazon.com or BarnesandNoble.com. And you can keep in touch with me on JenniferCochran.com, which is my website. I love it. Alrighty, listeners, now you know where you can get a copy of the book. We'll be back right after this. And we are back. Thank you so much for joining me for Daily Spark with Dr. Angela. I am your host, Dr. Angela Butchester. My guest today is author Jennifer Cochran, and I'm so excited to be talking to her about some things that we all need to learn how to do, and that is to make sure that we are aligned. Now, Jennifer, the next question I have, and we kind of addressed one bit of it, um, talking about our younger people, and that's utilizing the the alignment model that that you uh, talk about. But I want to kind of switch a little and ask, perhaps can we use this for our more senior adults? for our grandmothers and grandfathers out there as well? Well, uh, speaking speaking for all grandmothers and grandfathers, because I've been a grandmother for quite a while now, um, yes, people can learn this at any age. They just they just have to want to. You know, it's like it's like any change or Mm -hmm. uh, creating self awareness. You you just have to decide you want to. This is a this is a system that we all have. We all know we think. We all know we speak. We all know we have emotions, and we all know we take actions or behaviors. Um, it's the 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 point is how do you how do you line those up? How do you become aware that they're supposed to work together? And I haven't found anybody yet who who can't who can't work with that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I I love that you. You drop the nugget there of it. Do you want to do this? It's it's just about your your desire, your intention. What do you want? And if you want to do it, then you will be able to utilize it. I love it. I love it. Now, for for so many people, um, and we see this on social media when we talk about uh, self care, and we're telling people that we must learn how to take better care of ourselves, be it that is physically, uh, spiritually, mentally. Uh, some people comment, well, I think self-care is selfish, um, despite <laughs> the things that they have read. Where do you fall in, in line with that? How do you feel about self-care? Well, I again, I, I think self-care can be taught to people at a very young age, and it's certainly something that we can model um, to our children. I did not grow up with people who understood self-care, and so I became a parent, and I didn't know how to take good care of myself, and I was trying to nurture and give from this empty place, and and that doesn't work well. It does not work well. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I see what you're saying. So even though your intention may may have been well in that you want to love on others, you want to be there for them. But because you were running on a very low emotional tank or a uh, uh, low tank there yourself, uh, you could only give that the amount that you had. You you can give more because you didn't have the more. So you're trying to right. make sure that other people understand that hey, we need to make sure we're we're putting more in to the tank. I I love it. I love it. Now, for yeah. so many of the authors that I that I have on, um. They say that as they're writing, that there are nuggets that they that they put in the book um, along the way to make sure that people understand that in this chapter, this is what you're learning. Next chapter, this is what you're learning. Um, do you did you find that you that you did that as well? That you purposely put certain messages or um, nuggets of wisdom along the way in the book for the reader to gather as as they maneuver through. Yeah, I did. There, there are a couple of things that I used. One was finding quotes at the beginning of each chapter that, that I thought really, um, expressed the intention of that, that chapter. Um, another one was to put the little symbol of the dragonfly. Um, and at the beginning of the book, I talk about what, 
what that symbol means to me, the symbol of, of maturity and being able to switch gears, you know, quickly like a dragonfly does. Um, and, and the other thing that I found, you know, as you ask about this idea of nuggets was coming up with some exercises that I do with my clients in session that I was able to write about so that the reader could start to imagine, you know, kind of have a, an actual tool that they use um, in day-to-day, you know, life rather than just these concepts that, that sometimes can seem kind of abstract. I definitely love that idea to help people uh, move along. Mm, great, great, great. I love it. I love it. Now, would you suggest then that when someone is um, picking up their copy of the book that they read it from cover to cover, or can they pick it up and just start anywhere? Well, I've had several of my clients tell me how they use the book. Um, one One client said that she got the book, she went home, she read through the whole thing, And then she realized that she needed to read it slower the second time Uh and and really focus on each each chunk of content. So so she got the she got the the overview by reading it all. And then she went back and picked up, Okay, what does that really mean? Accountability. Like, what does that mean in my life? How am I showing up and being accountable? And then when she felt good about that, she went to the next big piece which was boundaries you know so it, it it became more of a resource which was my goal in writing it even though it's not you know a big fat book it 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 can be used as a resource as well as an interesting story mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I, I i like that and there's there's nothing like being um uh, mindful either when you are creating the book or when you're or when you're reading and i've had a, a couple of authors say that that's what they found that their readers were doing as well. They they read through and was like, wait a minute, this is this is mm-hmm. good. And they need to slow down. You know, don't just zip through it, but really be aware of what's going on 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 each page. I, I love it. So that's my that's my next question for you. Uh, mindfulness is is a word that my listeners have heard me uh, use uh, and talk about several times. But when when you mention alignment and the term uh, mindfulness um, is mentioned, are those kind of flip sides of of the same point? How are they related in how you utilize them? Hmm. Well, I think mindfulness is what we do to slow down and become more aware of our internal process. So in order to do a good job with the alignment model and the concepts, uh, mindfulness really can help you get there it because it slows things down. Oh, what am I thinking right now? I mean, I can't even tell you how many people have said, I don't know what I'm thinking. I know I am thinking all the time. You know, people with anxiety are thinking like way too much and way too fast. So they don't they're not even picking up what they're thinking. So anything that can help you slow down. And I found that even just you know hand washing dishes, if you do it slowly, can be very mindful. Um, So it can be anything, anything you can become more mindful about. It just means slowing down and becoming aware of that moment and and that process. So, yeah, mindfulness can help you become better at aligning. Absolutely. Okay. okay. Now, I know that um, for so many people out there, they have great support teams that no matter what they're going through, uh, good or bad, that they have. Um, great people around them to encourage them, to um, help them get from point A to point B. And for someone who says, you know, I'm that type of person, I, I'm a great support team member, um, how can someone who functions in, in that type of capacity, how can they utilize what's in your book to help them either share with personal growth or just to kind of take in and uh, fill their tank of personal growth? Hmm. Well, I'm going to I'm going to go to your the first the first comment, which was how do we support? Right. Is noticing when someone is being intentional. Notice when somebody is sharing their thoughts. Sometimes you can tell it's or or emotions. 
you know, sometimes you can see that they're they're really working hard to do that, that it's taking great courage to do that, to express themselves and to acknowledge that and say, I can see that that is hard for you. And I'm so glad that, that you're letting me know what's going on with you. Right. Because what that does is it says, I'm encouraging you. I, I want to hear more. I, I, I want to support what you're doing. And some people don't know how to do that. They don't know how to listen for for those pieces. And they also don't know how to say, oh, thank you. Thank you for letting me, you know, into that part of your world. Because that just makes people want to keep doing it because they feel really safe. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I, I love it. I love it. Well, Jennifer, just a few more questions for you. And, and I have to ask because I love what you have done with this book. Um, do you plan on writing more, be that is on alignment or balance or mindfulness or self-care for that matter? Or are you going to continue to, to share with us? Yes. As a matter of fact, I have – my next book is about three-quarters of the way done. It's actually a children's book because I I thought, well, how am I going to get this message to kids through their parents and so it's it's a children's book about understanding that who you are and the internal workings of you is just right. It's just who you're supposed to be. And of course I, I use farm animals, you know, as my characters because I live on a farm. So <laughs> that is so cute. I love it. <laughs> and it seems like, you know, farm animals not only help the children but they can kind of sometimes help the adult that's reading the book as well. So thank you for yes. being helpful, you know, because it, it, <laughs> it, it takes the pressure. It takes the pressure off and make it, you know, that's one silly cow or that's one really helpful pig. It's like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> so mm. I, I love it. I love mm. it. Well, Jennifer Cackran, thank mm. you so much for coming on and sharing your book with our listeners today. Um, I think that I can say that you have definitely – enlightened, inspired, and empowered someone today to be their best. Thank you again for for coming on. Now, before I let you go, though, please remind our listeners one last time the title of your book, where we can get a copy, and how do we stay in contact with you. The title of the book is Alignment, Move from Internal Chaos to Clarity. It can be purchased uh, in Soft cover, hard cover, and ebook through Amazon and Balboa Press. And you can find me and what I'm up to at jennifercochran.com. Thank you again, Jennifer, for being on the show. You're so welcome. And listeners, thank you for spending time with us here today as well. As always, may the Lord continue to shine his face upon you. May you receive his grace and his mercy in all that you do. Until next time, everyone, remember you are blessed in the Lord. Have a great day, everyone. Good morning, and thank you so much for joining me for Daily Sports with Dr. Angela. I am your host, Dr. Angela Buchchester. You know what I like to do on my show? I want to enlighten you. I want to inspire you. I want to empower you to become your best self. Now, Scripture reminds us that the tongue is a small thing that makes grand speeches, but a tiny spark can set a great forest on fire. And today, we want you to get fired up about the author, Elizabeth Bishop. Her book is entitled, Sign Me Up. So you know what I'm going to tell you to do. Go on, get comfy, get cozy, get your coffee, or get your tea, because we are about to get started. Good morning, Elizabeth. Thank you so much for joining me here on Daily Spark with Dr. Angela. Well, good morning. I'm very happy to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. Now, as is the custom here on the show, we give every author an opportunity to introduce themselves to perhaps the few people out there that are unfamiliar with you or your work. So my first question for you is, is what makes you, you? Ah, well, 
My name is Elizabeth Bishop, and I am a wife, a mother, a grandmother. I am uh, formerly a public uh, school teacher. Uh, I've since been retired. Um, I love the Lord Jesus Christ, and I'm a person who loves to share her faith. Oh, I like all that you said on there. That is awesome. I love that. I love that. And, you know, I find that people who really and truly say, I I love to talk about the Lord. I love to share my faith. I love to inspire others from that from that perspective. They really do. And they're really good at it. So I, I like I like that you said that. Now, being an author, is that something that you always wanted to do, or did you find that it was simply just the next thing that was placed along your path called life? I think that I always kind of had that in the back of my mind that I would like to be an author. I've always enjoyed writing, um, you know, be it just very simple little things. Um, So probably I've always thought about writing a book. But um gave it some more serious consideration when I was retiring from teaching and thinking that would be a great project for me to do, uh, especially after um, I just got some prompting I felt from the from the Lord to do that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I find that so many of um, the authors that I talk to of retirement is a beautiful time to do all of those things that you simply did not have time to do before and it seems like that writing is is one of those things so i can i can understand that now the title of your book how did you come about it many times people say it, the title came first and i wrote the book around the title others have mentioned i was writing and it kind of just popped up out of my writing how did you come about your title well, I would have to say that um, my writing began when I was uh, driving to church one day, and I came to a stop sign, and of course I stopped, but I was looking at the sign stop, and an acronym came to my mind, S-T-O-P, and that was, uh, the acronym that came was Stop to Offer Praise, and I thought, wouldn't that be wonderful if every time we came to a stop sign, we would Stop to offer praise, even if it was just to say, praise God or hallelujah, thank you, Lord. It's a beautiful day. I love you, God. You know, whatever we would have to say at that time, you know, it would just be uh, praise going up to the Lord Jesus Christ. And if we all did that, how much praise would just fill the, uh, fill the sky going right up to heaven? And so that's how it all started. And when I did that, I came home and I wrote about it. And that was actually the beginning. Um, uh, something happened, and the next time I had that happen to me, we were shopping. I was shopping with friends, and I bought a dress. And when I brought the dress home, there was a sign on the dress, and it said, I am washable. And immediately what came into my mind was not only, well, I'm glad it's washable. I don't buy things that I need to dry clean very often. <laughs> <laughs> so, but what came into my mind is, go, oh, Lord, I always want to be washable. You know, it's just, you know, yeah. even when we become a Christian, when we become a Christian, we still have things that we do wrong and that we still sin at times, even though as we grow, we're hoping that we get uh, more and more like Jesus, less and less of me, you know, ourselves. But we do still sin. And I guess one of my favorite verses in the Bible is 1 John 1, 9. And that's, if we can confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And so when I saw that sign, I just told the Lord, I don't want pride to keep me from doing that. I don't want stubbornness or or anything to keep me from confessing a sin when I do it so that I can be cleansed and I can be washed and I can be in right relationship with God again. So I sat down and I wrote about that the next day. And those things were happening uh, just little by little. And I would keep a folder with, with some of those writings. Uh, I love it. I love it. And especially when you said stop, and I said, ooh, to offer praise, 
amazing. I'm going to do that. Um, I don't have to stop at a stop sign very often, but when I do, what a beautiful thing to do because I think that we don't do those little things as often as we could or even as we should. So what a beautiful way to just give that moment to God, even if it is for just a few seconds, because he's definitely giving us more than a few seconds a day. I love it. I, I get where you're going with that. That's what a great thing to do there. Now, what do you consider uh, or who do you consider to be your audience for your book? Is this appropriate for um, our young adults and our teens, or would you say this is just for adults? Um, this, I think the audience for this would be for anyone. Anyone, um, it's, it's an easy to read book. It's not difficult to read. So it would be for, um, probably middle school all the way through, you know, for Christians. Um, it's a book for, um, it's a book for Christians to be encouraged and, um, just to develop their own relationship with Jesus a little more. You know, there, I say that only because there are discussion questions at the back of the book, uh, that, correspond to each excerpt that is given and so uh, it has been used for small group studies Uh, people have used that for discussion questions and you know whenever anybody gets together and they discuss it always leads into more and deeper discussions and so yes I believe it would be appropriate for any of that but Dr. Angela I think I forgot to answer your question in total of why did how did I come up with that book uh, with the title sign me up uh, this book is about signs. It's about road signs. It's about symbols, different symbols. And so the appropriate title just came to me one day and it was, well, it should be sign me up since it's about signs and since it's about uh, wanting to draw people's attention to the Lord Jesus Christ, you know, getting us up and closer to him. And so that's why it is sign me up. And I know on the radio you can't uh, tell, but at the end of sign me up, there is an arrow pointing up instead of an exclamation point. So that's the reason, that's the reason for the name of the book. Sign me up. <laughs> I like that. So if it were a road sign, you know, the up is, you know, keep moving forward, keep making that forward progress. Sign me up. Let's let's go on the right road. I like it. I like Mm. it. Now, Mm, would you think that it is appropriate for um, a reader to, to read it from cover to cover, or can they simply pick it up and start reading wherever they like? You can really pick it up and start reading from wherever you like. Uh, the excerpts are about two pages long, and it's an easy read. There's scriptures um, within each excerpt, uh, so it is an easy book um, to read. Uh, there are 30 of them, so even if you just did one a day, giving you time to think about it, um about that excerpt and the and the lesson that you know would uh we would uh gain from that the understanding we would gain from that and just um you know talking to the lord about that subject area um so easily it could be done just one a day just a few minutes each day for one month i like that and For so many people, we've gotten used to reading like a certain devotional every day, and we look forward to, uh, be it that it's on our phone or um, it's in a little booklet that we're reading or however we get it, we like that idea of having just that little bit of time set aside every day to to get that bit of inspiration and scripture inside of us. So I could see how that is a a great way to to utilize your book and, and read one a day. I like that very 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 mindful of you. Now, for many authors, as they're writing, their purpose, or uh, be it that it's subconsciously or consciously, they put nuggets nuggets along the way that help the reader, you know, go from next chapter to next chapter. Did you find that you put these um, certain messages along the way to help the, the reader go from start to finish? 
Um, no, I think the, uh, I didn't, it's not a book like that that would go from chapter to chapter and entice you. Each one pretty much stands on its own. And so, um, you know, there is, there is not that element in this type of book. Um, it's more, it is used more as a devotional and each one has its own application. Oh, great, great, great. Cause, you know, I know for that person that's going like, oh my goodness, does that mean I have to read the whole thing? I like what you're saying, that they could read it as they need to be, that it's one a day. But if you choose number one, number five, number nine, it doesn't matter. You can read them independently. Great, great, great idea. Thank you for, for that clarification. So for so many people, they are longing to, especially now with everything that's going on, is to have a more personal relationship with Christ. They're really getting in tune with their spiritual self, if if you will, because we don't know if tomorrow is, is promised to us at night, the next day, as with everything that's going on. Um, is having a personal relationship um, with God one of the things that you talk about? Yes, it is. That actually is the purpose for this book. The purpose is to share my faith in Jesus Christ and also to connect the reader with what a relationship with Jesus looks like. And so each one of the signs just leads us into what are the scriptures, what what is it that would help us to have a closer relationship with Jesus. If I could just go back to a little bit about what prompted me to write, I did I did write those two first, the one I talked about the stop sign and the other talking about the sign on the dress. And, you know, I just was, I believe that this is a um, uh, something that God wanted me to write. And I say that because we had a guest speaker at our church one time and I was uh, Elizabeth, invited to. Uh, Elizabeth, yeah. I'm, I'm so sorry to cut you off. It is time for us to go to break. Um, but if you could, please, can you remind everyone, where did you, um, I'm sorry, what is the title of your book? Where can we get a copy? And how do we stay in contact with you? Okay, well, the title of my book is Sign Me Up. It is available in Amazon Books. You can also order it from Barnes & Noble. And to stay in contact with me, I do have a website. It is called signmeupbook.com. Alrighty, listeners, now you know where you can get a copy of the book. We'll be back right after this. so much for joining me for Daily Spark with Dr. Angela. I am your host, Dr. Angela Chester. My guest today is Elizabeth Bishop, and we're talking about her book, Sign Me Up. All right. Now, Elizabeth, I want to ask you the question of the purpose of you writing the book. I know that for so many authors, it's something that may have gone on personally that they want to share. Um, and, and it, or it kind of falls into one of the categories that I talk about to enlighten someone, to inspire someone or to empower someone. Why did, why did you feel that you had to write this book? What was its purpose? Okay. The reason why I felt like I needed to write this book and continue with it it was always a desire of my heart to write this book. And then I was invited to, uh, there was a guest speaker at our church, and I was invited to be in a small group with her afterwards just to get to know her and fellowship with her. Well, before we left, she asked if she could pray for us. And when she came to me, she said, Elizabeth, sign symbols, you are to finish. Well, I was very uh, surprised at that That's because I had not told anyone about this book except yeah. for my husband. And uh, except for my husband. And so on the way home, it was like, wow, well, Lord, I think what started out as a desire just became an assignment. And so, <laughs> yes. And so I felt I needed to finish. It was so it was very motivating for me to finish the book. And so that's uh, why I was more mindful of science and just different things that would happen. And so 
um, you know, I just to uh, tell you that there are just different signs that I wrote about. You know, one was about turning on lights when you're going through a tunnel. Um, just, you know, talking about driving down in Virginia on Interstate 77 and you have to go through two tunnels. And you know, when we go through the tunnels or the dark places that we find ourselves in, whether it be um, financial stress or relationship problems, um, uh, health issues, whatever it is, you know, that we find ourselves in, it, it instructs us when we're going through that physical tunnel to turn on the light. And I would say when we're going through these other other tunnels of life that we need to turn on the light. And we know then I talk about Jesus being the light of the world. And then I talk about the scriptures, how um, he is a very present help in the time of trouble. No matter what we are in, we have scriptures in the word of God that will direct us as to how to maneuver through those times of difficulty. I also have, you know, just thinking about, um, you know, signs, for example, well, one of my, I could tell you it's my very favorite, although I love the stop sign. My favorite, very favorite was when I wrote about mix together, blend well, or as I subtitled it, I would, I wrote mix it, mix it, Jesus can fix it. <laughs> and so with this one, it was just of a blender. And, you know, when we make pastries, we blend flour uh, with Crisco, with shortening, two very separate elements. But you put them together and they become inseparable, right? You cannot separate it. Once they've been blended and mixed together, they become dough. And so that's the way it is. When I'm thinking of that, I think of we must mix our faith with the word of God. There are so many promises in the word of God. And when we read those words of God that we need and we mix our faith with it, we say we believe it, then those are promises that he will do for us. God is God is the God who is faithful to um, keep his promises. And so that was my mix it, mix it, Jesus can fix it uh, article. There are so many uh, different different excerpts that I could talk about, um, you know, if we, if we had time. <laughs> I love that. And, you know, I, I could see someone just sitting around going, oh, my goodness, I am totally going to look at those signs and prompts a whole lot differently now. Because what you say is is a thousand percent true. We we get these little reminders, if you will, with everything that that is around us, and it, it's so beautiful how scripture is always talking to us. Be it that we have the eyes to see, the ears to listen, it's it's right there, and it will be presented to you in a way in which you're able to actually grab a hold of it and make it your own. And I love that you are bringing bringing that to us. I'm telling you, I am not going to stop at a stop sign again without thinking about that. Let's stop for that count of three <laughs> seconds is to do nothing else than to say thank you, God, for it today. I love oh. that. I love that. Now, when you were um, in, in the writing process, you're writing your book, it has been edited, you've chosen your cover, it's off to the publishers, you now have a copy of your book in your hands. How did you feel in that moment? I felt um, a sense of accomplishment. I felt that God had given me an assignment to write the book, and I felt like I obeyed. I obeyed. I completed the task that he had for me to do. So um, a little bit about the cover, too, the the, the uh, cover, actually, uh, a friend of mine said, what is your cover going to look like? And I said, oh, I don't know. I love navy blue, and maybe I'll just put the title in silver. <laughs> and she said, who is 20 years younger than me, she said, oh, no, it needs to be much better than that. And the same way, I just felt like one day uh, this thought came into my mind, and it said, it's about signs. It's about road signs. So you, the name of your book needs to be on a large billboard with on a on a road so that's what the cover of my book looks like 
I love it. I love it. And you know, it is, it is so important to have those people around us that are going to be really good sounding boards for us. You know, they have that constructive criticism. Uh, anybody can have criticism. You know, but that constructive criticism that really is going to make your product, your service, you know, whatever it is, make it better. Um, that that person is is always worthy of their high five. So good job for for saying no. I know it's something better in there for you, and you were able to dig deep and find that answer. I love it. I love it. So my next question for you, Elizabeth, is with everything that's going on in the world, I know that many of our authors, before there was, you know, COVID-19, so kind of like BC, right, before COVID, uh, we were out and about and we were doing book signings and we were able to uh, interact with others and, and do all of those things that we do uh, as, as authors. Um, how has your book um, been able to – like open doors for you or or give you an opportunity to continue to not only share about your book but also to to share from from that personal context of sharing Christ with others. Um how were you able to do it before and how do you do it now considering we have uh covid uh, in our day-to-day lives? Uh well, covid certainly has changed things. And uh but before I by writing this book, it just opened up a lot of doors for me to share my faith. I was able to speak to groups of small groups as well as larger groups. I was able to um, do a women's uh, retreat, uh, which was a lot of fun. I did that for for the two days. Um, I have, was invited to speak at a tea, and there were uh, quite a few ladies there, between 160, 170 probably, uh, ladies that I got to share my faith with them. So, yes, it has been fun to be able to uh, go out and speak. Um, I love talking about the Lord and what an adventure it is to be um, to, to be a Christian, you know, and to and to uh, just to have opportunities to fulfill the plans that he plans for us to do. So since COVID, yes, things have slowed down, but um I'm just looking forward to 2021 and to see what doors God will open for me. Mm-hmm. Now, do you have a desire to uh, continue to write, um, or, or do you think that this is this is it? So many authors say they've got bitten by the author bug, you know, and it's like, oh no, I have several more books. Um, that, that I wish to write and others say, no, I think this is one and done. Where do you fall on that spectrum? Um, well, let's see. Where I fall is um, at this moment, I don't have any plans to write another book. However, I would say that if uh, I felt prompted by the Holy Spirit and uh, was given another assignment to write another book, I would definitely say yes because it was a lot of fun. Absolutely. I, I like that answer. Now, when you were writing, uh, did you find that you needed to kind of be off by yourself? Were, were you the type of writer that needed it to be quiet so that you could, you know, collect your thoughts and, and, and write without distraction? Or did you mind the hustle and bustle of, of life going past? Well, I would say my writing process started out, first of all, was just um, having the signs when I would see a sign and then when I would think about what that uh, sign could mean if I gave a spiritual connection to it, um, then I would go home and just write about it. But I found that as it was getting closer to the point where I knew I needed to complete this project, and I needed to get it done, then I needed to take time in my schedule to do it. And I needed to set apart what I did was I set apart um, every Tuesday as writing day, and I would write on Tuesdays. And that seemed to help me because then I actually put it in my calendar so that I didn't, I didn't have any other commitments on that day. It would just be that day was already filled. And I found that that helped me to stay focused and to complete it. Absolutely. I could, I could see how that, that really did help, um, with, with the scheduling. That, that totally, that totally makes sense. 
Now, for so many authors, um, we we talk about um, how important it is for us to get the information out there because we want to um, share what what God has has given to us. Um, Another thing that we talk about is uh, being successful. Um, for so many people, being a successful whatever it is, be that it's an author, doctor, uh, parent, um, it looks it looks like a certain thing. Be it that it's a big house or a fancy car or being able to. Back when I was a little girl, it was having a mink coat. Whatever it was. If we blend those two things, and I ask you about literary success, um, what does being a successful author look like to you? Well, I think having the purpose that you set out for, having the purpose of that being accomplished in whatever you are writing I know a lot of people, their purpose is for entertainment. Others might be for information. Uh, Whatever the purpose of your book is, if you're able to write that and to get that across to your audience, then I would say that, uh, you know, they would be a successful writer. So for me, I wanted to express my um, faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and how a personal relationship would help us all throughout this life as well as giving us the gift of eternal life with him, uh, that is what I really wanted to get across. And um, I would say if I would consider myself successful or not, it's just that in the Proverbs it says, if you will make the effort, God will crown it with success. So my success would just be that I finished it, I was obedient, I completed the assignment that God gave me. And... uh, to God be all the glory uh, for for the purpose of the book. If if um, you know people are encouraged, which I hope they are, if it gives them hope, which I hope it does, uh, if they are um, you know even prompted, if they've never known Jesus, if they're prompted and they are wanting to have this relationship with Him, then all of that, all the glory and the honor of all of the fruit of the book goes to the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm just, I was just a, uh, an instrument and I'm just so thankful to be, uh, to be there and that God would include me. So, um, he Love loves it. everyone. Mm-hmm. He loves everyone so much, so much more than we could ever understand. He just loves us and he wants relationship with us and he plans he has plans for each one of us to do. And so Absolutely. he just, um, yes. Absolutely. I love it. Well, Elizabeth, we are out of time. But before I let you go, can you please remind everyone one last time the title of your book, where they can get a copy, and how do we stay in contact with you? Okay, yes. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Angela. The title of my book is Sign Me Up. My name is Elizabeth Bishop, and it can be found at Amazon Books. It can also be ordered through Barnes & Noble. And uh, the way you can stay in touch with me is through my website, which is titled signmeupbook.com. I love it. Thank you again, Elizabeth, for being on Daily Spark with Dr. Angela. Thank you, Dr. Angela. Thank you so much. I've really enjoyed it. I enjoyed speaking with you as well. And listeners, we hope that you too have enjoyed today. I know that we have enlightened, inspired, and empowered you to do your best today. As always, may the Lord continue to shine His face upon you. May you receive His grace and His mercy in all that you do. Until next time, everyone, remember, you are blessed in the Lord. Have a great day, everyone.